this point in our global summit, we've decided to go ahead and rerun a very special presentation that was done for us by Dr. Susan Quaggan, who's the president of the American Society of Nephrology. Dr. Quaggan joined AAKP late last year on a session on diabetic kidney disease, or DKD. Richard Knight and I have been very involved with Susan over the years. She's a very strong patient champion and somebody who really understands that patients must be involved in the solutions that are being developed for them because without their voice, essentially, they really don't have a choice. Dr. Quaggan serves as the uh, chair of ASN's Diabetic Kidney Disease Collaborative, and she's the director of the Feinberg Cardiovascular and Research Institute and chief of nephrology and hypertension at the Department of Medicine at Northwestern University. It's a very special pleasure for us to repeat this presentation by Dr. Quaggan. Well, thank you very much, Paul, for that wonderful introduction. And I want to thank both Paul Conway and Richard Knight for the wonderful invitation to be with you today. Mr. Knight and Mr. Conway asked me to present today on a new initiative that is happening at the American Society of Nephrology that I am very excited about. It focuses on diabetic kidney disease, and we are known as the DKD-C. To set the scope of the issue, um, we are in the midst of a pandemic right now in very difficult times. But preceding this pandemic, I think everybody in the audience knows that there's been a long-standing epidemic of diabetes throughout the world, and, and there will be one for many, many years and decades to come. Now, this is an old slide uh, that I've chosen uh, to show. And in 2015, there was an estimated 415 million people in the world living with diabetes. And said another way, that is one in 11 adults. If we focus on the United States alone, there is an estimated 48 million individuals living with diabetes. Now, the majority of people with diabetes have type 2 diabetes. However, irregardless of whether you have type 1 or type 2 diabetes, 30 to 40 percent will develop diabetic kidney disease. And this is a staggering number. And in fact, many people in the, in the public really don't recognize the impact of kidney disease in diabetes. So, you know, what can we do to prevent kidney disease and diabetes? And this slide talks about sort of standard of care. This standard of care existed when I was a nephrology trainee, and that is now 30 years ago. And so for a number of decades, the recommendations really did not change very much. There is no cure for diabetes and there is no cure for kidney disease and diabetes. However, there are ways to slow the progression of kidney disease and to slow the progression to kidney failure. And I think most people know that these things include excellent blood sugar control, and this is a combination of diet, exercise, and medications excellent blood pressure control. And in particular, there is a class of blood pressure medications that have a long name. They're known as renin angiotensin aldosterone system inhibitors, and this includes the ACE inhibitors and the ARBs, the angiotensin receptor blockers. And I can tell you, I remember 30 years ago, sitting in a room, a classroom, hearing the results of this landmark trial that showed for the first time a new type of drug that could really dramatically slow the progression of kidney disease in patients with diabetes. Incredibly exciting, and I can still visualize it. Um, it had such an impact on me. Despite us knowing for over 30 years now that this therapy is really beneficial. A recent study showed that patients with diabetes who should be receiving these medications as standard of care, in fact, only 30% of patients were receiving them. So this is very, very, um, this is a, a real issue and uh, we need to understand why these therapies haven't been adopted, why they're not prescribed and why they're not getting to the patients who need them. In addition uh, to these therapies, certainly looking after heart risk factors, looking after lipids and other things are also important in diabetes. So this is 
one real issue, getting the medications that are needed to patients. The second issue, which is actually very exciting and uh, is energizing, is that there are a number of new therapies that have now entered the market. And you know, it really is time to change history of diabetic kidney disease. Over the past few years, there have been a number of new therapies that target the kidney specifically. In particular, a class of medications known as SGLT2 inhibitors or sodium glucose transport inhibitors that were originally designed and discovered through research. And the thought was it could help blood glucose or blood sugar control by promoting sugar loss in the urine. However, the clinical trials done in thousands of patients showed that it's not really good at lowering blood sugar. However, they are tremendously powerful at protecting the kidney in patients with diabetes. So a kidney, a truly kidney targeted therapy. In addition, these drugs also have profound and powerful effects on protecting the heart in patients with diabetes. In addition to this really exciting new class of drugs, there are a number of other new players on the, on the scene, and these include GLP-1 agonists, GLP-1 receptor agonists, a new study that was stopped early because of positive effects, looking at finerenone, which is an aldosterone uh, inhib mineralocorticoid receptor inhibitor. And all of these are showing powerful protection of the kidney and also of the heart in diabetes. And interestingly, um, it appears that the SGLT2 inhibitors have additional effects even in patients who don't have diabetes but also have kidney disease. Based on all of this information, the scope of the problem, we know there's an epidemic of diabetes, staggering numbers of individuals who have diabetic kidney disease. We know that for the past 30 years, patients with diabetes have not been getting the best care. So now with these new therapies, um, there was a real uh, passion, a real desire to ensure that we get these new therapies to patients who need them. So the American Society of Nephrology launched a task force known as the Diabetic Kidney Disease Collaborative. And I show uh, an image here of all the members of this task force, which I have the privilege to chair. On the left-hand side, I think known to many of you uh, here, um, Dr. Patrick G, who is an ambassador uh, and on the board of directors at AAKP and is our patient voice and advocate on the task force. David Cherney, standing next to him, who is a nephrologist at the University of Toronto, a uh, world-renowned diabetes and diabetic kidney disease researcher and physician. Next to him is Dr. Catherine Tuttle, who is both a nephrologist and a diabetes doctor and endocrinologist, and she works in Washington State and another expert researcher and physician in diabetes and diabetic kidney disease, Alan Kleiger, uh, who has been on the task force of numerous uh, uh, committees at the American Society of Nephrology, including the COVID task force, um, bringing his expertise. I'm standing uh, next to Alan. Next to me is Ray Harris, who is the past president of the American Society of Nephrology and the Kidney Health Initiative co-chair, uh, nephrologist at Vanderbilt. And then finally, Chip Brocious, who's the chief of nephrology uh, at Arizona, also a researcher and nephrologist interested in diabetic kidney disease. So when we launched this uh, collaborative, we had uh, a charge and the charge is to develop strategies to promote the rapid and universal adoption of these powerful new therapies, such as the SGLT2 inhibitors that I talked about a couple of slides ago, to make sure they are provided to all patients who need them. So our objectives to you know, accomplish this charge is to empower and uh, engage nephrologists and the kidney care team so that they prescribe these new therapies for patients with diabetic kidney disease. We want them to take, take charge. In addition, we want to promote partnerships that are absolutely critical between nephrologists and other healthcare providers that look after patients with diabetes. This includes primary care physicians, endocrinologists or diabetes doctors, and heart specialists or cardiologists to truly encourage a team-based approach to patient care, which we feel is so important. To develop educational resources for patients, for healthcare providers, to ensure there is a rapid adoption of these new powerful therapies. 
and also to work with policy and regulatory agencies as well as payers to make sure that it's possible for patients to receive these medications and for all patients to receive them. So how are we doing this? So the task force you saw, uh, you aren't seeing an incredible group of staff, people at ASN who helped bring this all together. Um, over the past uh, couple of years, this task force has met weekly on virtual meetings and more recently every other week. Uh, we hosted an in-person strategy conference in Washington, D.C. in January of this past year. And stakeholders who were present were patients, uh, the National Kidney Foundation, our partners at AAKP, nephrologists from around the country. There were representatives from payers, from health systems, from the FDA, from human health services, from pharmaceutical companies, and our research partners at the National Institute of Health. And out of this very energizing meeting, um, we've developed a white paper with a long list of de deliverables and a description of subgroups to help us accomplish the charge. And this includes an educational materials and advocacy subgroup, a patient-oriented project sub subgroup, a pilot project subgroup, meetings and collaborative subgroup. We are in the midst of three webinars. The first was hosted in August, and this was spearheaded by Patrick G, uh, with a number of patients uh, and nephrologists and endocrinologists talking about diabetes, diabetes and kidney disease and management in the time of COVID-19. And if you didn't get an opportunity to log into that webinar, it's available on our ASN website and freely downloadable, and it was phenomenal. Our second webinar is scheduled for September, and this one is going to focus on nephrologists and the kidney care team to really uh, in, empower and engage uh, the kidney care team to adopt these therapies, start prescribing them, and to talk to patients about them. And in December, we're going to have our multidisciplinary webinar inviting our cardiology uh, heart colleagues, endocrinologists, um, to discuss the newest standards of care uh, to ensure that we slow uh, the progression of kidney disease and diabetes and also slow the progression of heart disease in our patients. What I've talked about today, and I can't tell you how excited I am about all of these new therapies, they are going to transform the history and the course and the trajectory of kidney disease and diabetes. However, despite their ability to really dramatically slow the progression of kidney disease and prevent patients from uh, ending up on dialysis for years and over a decade. We can't stop. We're only going to stop when we cure diabetes and when we cure kidney disease. So we need to continue to work together, partners with AAKP and ASN to advocate for more kidney focused fun funding with our NIH and NIDDK partners. And uh, I can't tell you, I think everybody here knows that Congress listens to patients. And I would also encourage you as patients and providers to um, consider enrolling in clinical trials and to be sure to check out the clinicaltrials.gov website. And it's only when we get great representation in these clinical trials will we really be able to make an impact in this disease. So my final slide, I just want to um, finish um, and say that partnering with patients is absolutely essential for success of this initiative, of this collaborative initiative. Patients absolutely have the most powerful voice. And if you have any interest in getting engaged with the DKDC task force or learning more about it, please reach out to us and continue to work with AAKP or you can email the Executive Vice President Todd Ibrahim at ASN. I absolutely know that together we will win this good fight and together we are all going to sock it to kidney disease. Again, I want to thank Paul and Richard Knight for the incredible invitation to participate in this very important meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Quaggan, and we appreciate you allowing us to rerun your special session that you did for the American Association of Kidney Patients on diabetic kidney disease.